Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'll be making a 1902 trumpet skirt based on this dress from Janet Arnold's Patterns of Fashion 2. I hope you enjoy. The first step of this skirt was enlarging it from the buck. Enchanted Rose Costumes did a lovely video on how to do so, which I will link above and below. My cat Scarlet insisted on helping me in the enlarging process. Here was how the four pieces looked once I was finished. The horizontal line near the bottom is marking where I will cut for my hem facing. I cut out my pieces from this wine colored cotton twill for mood fabrics. In addition to the pieces I enlarged from the buck, I cut a 3 inch wide waistband and two pocket pieces. I then chopped the bottom of each pattern piece off and cut a 6 inch hem facing for each skirt piece. I also cut a piece of tarlatan, a period stiffener, to match each hem facing piece. Here you see me marking a half inch away from the top of the hem facing piece with tailor's chalk. I then placed the tarlatan pieces, which were cut half an inch smaller than the facings on top, wrong sides together. I then pinned the two layers together. After the tarlatan and facings were pinned together, I pinned together all the facing pieces. The facing pieces were then sewed right sides together using a half an inch seam allowance, which I added to all pieces when I enlarged them. Once the facing pieces were sewn together, I moved the hem facing over to the ironing board and pressed open the seams and pressed the hem facing over the tarlatan layer, pinning it in place. This was then sewed by machine, thus finishing the top edge of the hem facing. Now that the facing was sewn, it was time to move on to the actual assembly of the skirt. Here you see the front piece pinned to the side front pieces. After they were sewn, I turned the seam allowance inwards on itself and pinned it together. This was then sewed by hand and ironed towards the back of the skirt. Before the side pieces could be attached, I had to insert the pocket, which was pink to finish and our seam being pinned to either side of the side seam. After the pocket pieces were sewn and ironed out, I could pin the rest of the side seam. The top edge of the pocket was also sewn down to the line marked with chalk, so the pocket opening would be about an inch down from the waist. Thank you. 
After being sewn, the rest of the seam was finished like the front two seams. The other side seam was pinned per usual, sewn by machine using a half an inch seam allowance and finished like the other seams. Now it was time to attack the back placket. I pinned a 9 inch long, 3 inch wide strip to either side of the center back seam and sewed. After the strips were attached, I seamed together the rest of the center back seam. Here you see me ironing the placket, one side under and the other in half to hide the white petticoats worn underneath the skirt. The placket was then pinned in place. I then sew the placket by hand using whip stitches. The rest of the center back seam was finished by turning the seam allowance inwards and whip stitching. I then pinned and sewed the side back pieces to the back pieces. Now that the skirt was assembled, it was time to attach the facing. The facing was pinned to the skirt, right sides together. The facing was then sewed by machine using a half an inch seam allowance. After the facing was sewn, I ironed the facing seam allowance upward towards the facing. I then understitched the facing to help it turn inward smoothly. Here you can see a close up of the under stitching and the facing pinned and ready for stitching. The hem was sewn by hand using whip stitches.
Here is how the hem looked once completed. I then took Abby's advice and bound my hem in worsted wool braid for endurance, structure, and support. Burley and Trowbridge didn't have any braid in purple, so I went with a complimentary black instead. Now that the bottom of the hem was tackled, I turned my attention to the waistband, which you see me interfacing here. I pinned my waistband and skirt flush until I got to the side, back, back seam, then pleated the rest using the divide and conquer method. This is when you divide a piece into halves, then quarters, then six, and so on until you have manageable sections. Then match the pins up and pleat the fabric within those smaller sections. Here you see me matching up those pins and pleating the remaining fabric. I then sewed the waistband. After sewing the waistband, I ironed and pinned the waistband over, thus finishing the waist seam. The waistband was then finished by hand. The last step was to sew in some wide skirt hook and bar closures into the waistband using buttonhole thread. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always everything mentioned in the video and more than the reveal will be linked below. Thank you.